I've been troubleshooting performance for mission critical applications for almost 15 years now. And we really wanted to impart upon you with some uh, really good best practice philosophies on ensuring that the applications that, uh, and, and networks and systems that are uh, supporting the businesses that you're trying to uh, grow into wonderfully uh, large things, that you don't have an issue when you scale, when your business grows, that your apps don't fall apart because of it. And if they do, knowing ahead of time that there's an issue before your customers complain or, God forbid, leave you, and if there is an issue, being able to accurately identify very quickly what the problem is so you can solve it. So this should be pretty logical, but if you want to fix the things that matter, the first thing you have to do is find what matters. And the key about finding things that matter is really understanding what is important to the business. So this isn't just about technically saying, why is the slowest thing slow, which is a, a big issue I see with a lot of my customers, but really understanding what is the thing I can do that's going to make the most positive impact to the business, that's going to retain the most customers, that's going to make us more productive or more efficient. So this, com this whole presentation is going to be about finding things. I'm going to leave it to you to fix the problems once you find them. But this is about methodology to make sure you find the right things. The most important thing you have to start with is finding the right things uh, from the right places in the right way. So what this means is make sure that you have the telemetry in your applications to know ahead of time what are people doing, how long is it taking, and if it's slow, why? Now, there's things that you can do. You can, you can purchase uh, uh, third-party uh, products, like in the APM space. That's what Riverbed does. But when you're starting up, it would be important for you to really think about embedding that telemetry into your applications right off the bat. Don't make this an afterthought. I always tell people, fear your own success. If you become successful and you get all the people using your service that you want them to, uh, are you going to be able to keep up? So that's critical. And then once you've got all of that data that's useful, it's up to you to make sure that you leverage it the right way. And I've seen in all too many cases, people have good data, but they ask the wrong questions, and they ultimately don't get the answers that matter. And then they spin their wheels and solve problems that really aren't really that important in the big picture. And lastly, I want to challenge you to really think holistically. So while you're, you're, it's very easy when you're first building a business, you're going to become myopically focused on the thing that you're building, the app, the code, whatever. But remember that it lives in a larger ecosystem, and there are things that it is dependent on to work. And if you get so focused on why is my code slow, but you forget about the fact that it runs on operating systems and it's connected via networks, or maybe it's running in the cloud, uh, you can ultimately get into a situation where, you're, you're again, you're, you're laser focused in the wrong area, and the problem will elude you. So before I, got into how, before I get into how you do this, I really wanted to sort of share with you an example of the types of benefits that you can reap if you take the right approach. So this is one of my customers, a large multinational financial services company. They have credit cards and loans and you know, online bill pay, things like that. M many of you probably have um, their credit cards in your pocket right now. And they, had a, they have a large environment with about 30 tier one applications, meaning the mission critical things that really cost them millions and millions of dollars if they're, if they're down even briefly. And across those 30 uh, different applications, they had about uh, thousands of different types of transactions, meaning account lookup or what is my balance, uh, I want to bill pay, add a new payee, whatever. And these are all important things that you've done, I'm sure, with your own you know, banks and other applications. One of them was causing them a lot of grief was this account details. It was the first thing people saw when they came in. It gave them a summary of their whole sort of experience with this customer. And what my, what my customer did before I got involved was they used uh, some legacy tools. They identified the slowest transactions. These were normally taking about a second to complete. And they were looking at the ones that were taking 10 seconds, 100 seconds, and trying to figure out why were those so slow. And they looked inside of that with uh, uh, APM tools. They identified the slowest pieces of code. They optimized that code and uh, to no avail. All of that effort over months didn't really produce any major uh, impact to this. So that's when I got involved. And I shared with them a met the methodology we're going to talk about today and also tools that allowed them to do this to go from optimizing the slowest transactions, which is a very small percentage of everything that everybody does, and really focusing on all of the transactions. Because you can say, on average, our performance is x. 
But the individual people who have 100x performance are not going to like you very much. And this, is gonna, this could be the, the nail in the coffin for a very successful business from a conceptual standpoint that if some percentage of your users are very unhappy, they're going to leave you, they're going to go someplace else, you're going to get a bad name, and then ultimately this wonderful thing you built is not going to get off the ground. And by analyzing all of the, the things holistically, they're able to then identify what are the things that overall are causing the most grief and focusing their attention on those. So the real world benefits of this is that instead of identifying some gnarly piece of code that takes 100 milliseconds or 500 milliseconds, it was some stupid little thing that took 53 milliseconds. It was actually a piece of logging code that they put in, uh, telemetry like I was advising you to do, but they didn't do it the right way. And as a result of this little piece of code running all the time, when they optimized it, it went from on the app server 1.1 seconds of, of response time down to 62 milliseconds. I mean, gargantuan improvement. This is 95% improvement by fixing one silly little thing. It affected 7 million transactions every single day, so multiply that by 365 for your year. 2,000 processing hours, wait time of the users were just abandoned by this, were just eliminated, uh, and also 2,000 hours of processing cycles. So if you had been running in the cloud and having to pay for all your CPU cycles, there'd be 2,000 less that you would have needed, all by fixing a little tiny thing. So after this was improved, and by the way, it only took a couple of days to get this done, the developers said, you know, we knew that this was a problem. We just didn't realize the scope of it. And this is why I keep preaching big data and having telemetry. You want to know ahead of time where the hotspots are. And then management, when they saw this wonderfully you know, big improvement, which, by the way, had, you know, took a while uh, uh, before they even tried, management wanted to know how long had it been like this. And of course, the answer was forever. They had built this into the app years ago. And they've always been incurring this delay unnecessarily. And then the next question was, what else uses the code that you fixed? And the answer was everything. So that's a big deal. Think about that, right? They had 30 different applications, thousands of different transactions. We were just focused on one. That was that improvement. But it turns out they all shared this code. So fixing one thing yielded tens of millions of transactions a day, if not hundreds, of benefit. So thinking about your world holistically and saying, our application, our service has multiple functions. Keep in mind that they're shared pieces of, of things that you've developed, code, or it could be dependencies on remote web services, whatever it happens to be. And those things can become the bottleneck. If you think of it like you know, in major cities where all the big highways happen to go into one, there's one area where they all crisscross. That's where all the traffic is. That's where all the uh, accidents occur. And that's the types of things you need to focus on. So why does this happen? It has to do with what I, what's well known as the flaw of averages. This river, this lake, by the dock, there's a sign that says, on average, three feet deep. So I would say probably everybody in this room could just step off of the dock, walk across, and they'd be fine. But in, in actuality, it's about maybe less than a foot deep, and there's this huge pit in the middle that this poor statistician has now fallen into who can't swim. So on average, he should be alive, but the maximum value of his life is zero. Right? So you need to be aware that if you don't collect data the right way, you don't ask questions the right way, this will plague you. And you'll think everything's fine, and it won't be. So we often see with customers, they, especially management, they have these ludicrous questions about performance. They want to know, what is the response time of the app? A very simplistic question. Or what is the response time of this one page? Well, if we look at this sample log, there's 10,000 executions over four hours. And you can see that there's a 70-second response time, a three-second response time. So in actuality, there are over 10,000 answers to this question. Every individual request by every individual user has a different answer. And then you could also answer an aggregate for subsets of those. So this concept of having a singular value to put on a report or a dashboard is you know, just ludicrous. I know you have to have it to meet your SLAs and so on, but that doesn't tell you if your customers are happy, if they're going to keep coming back, or they're going to give you a bad name in the industry. So we employ other techniques, like time series graphs, to get more samples over time. So for these 10,000 samples with a good line chart, I've got 240 answers. So now I can see patterns that are evolving. In the beginning, there's you know, lower response time. In the middle, it's higher. And while this is a better improvement than the single, not all charts are created equal. If this is captured in one-minute samples, but you have data that's captured in 15-second samples, it's a totally different story for the exact same data set. So you have big spikes that are 45 seconds, but the previous chart said, no, it's, we're never worse than 25. That could be the make or break of whether or not you know that your customers are happy. And 
If you go even further and get really high definition data, one second granularity, you'll find these little slivers of time where your performance is just horrible. And customers for those seconds are just very unhappy. That is the way to know that people are, are really you know, happy or not happy with your environment. But there's a new way of doing this, right? We can employ big data techniques. So instead of aggregating things when we're capturing it or aggregating things when we're visualizing it, we could simply say, let's see it all. So here's all 10,000 data points of this sample data set. And you can see this beautiful bell pattern. You can see all these sort of scatter charts, uh, uh, plots of, of, of anomalies. And when you have big data, you not only have the knowledge of what is slow, you have the knowledge of why it's slow. So that one dot out of 10,000 is because of one piece of code. This other dot is because of some particular piece of SQL. The next one is another piece of code. So we can see if there's consistency or inconsistency in the patterns. With the right tool set, you can see how it flows through a multi-tier environment for every individual one of those dots. We can provide call stacks down to the you know, call level of the methods that are slow, how do we get to them? What were the parameters passed? And you can do this for thousands of transactions per second in production without impacting your app if you do it in the right way or you employ the right tools. So this visibility allows you to do some very cool things. You could say, for example, let's exclude everything that has an error. And then what's left, patterns reveal themselves. We see these bars now of these dots of something interesting. And we could look at each one of them and say, well, what's up with this set? Oh, they're slow because of a timeout to a third-party web service. This one is a timeout to a database. This other one is a timeout to authentication server. And the little guys at the very bottom are because of catastrophic failures where the app doesn't even get to start. So if you're only looking at the slowest things, you wouldn't even know about the ones that actually failed be because they're so fast. So this is the beauty of these big data approaches, is that it's kind of like in the Matrix when Neo was first introduced to the code. Neo says to Cypher, he says, do you always look at it in the code? He says, I don't even see the code anymore. I see a blonde, a brunette, a redhead. There's patterns that reveal themselves out of that noise that help you really identify issues that would have been lost if you were looking at it in some aggregated manner. So just to show that this isn't completely academic, these are sample scatter charts from customers I've worked with where you could see very interesting patterns. You could see vertical lines that mean one thing, horizontal lines are your timeouts. Your diagonals in one direction are queuing at the client side. Diagonals in the other direction are queuing at the server side. There are sawtooths within sawtooths. You'll never see a chart like this with a line chart, ever. So if you are responsible for understanding, are all of my customers happy? Are these transactions performing well? If you've never seen data like this, you don't really know whether or not everything is OK for everybody. You're just attacking it on average. And it could be that river where you're going to drown because of these anomalies. So if we go back to these sets of transactions and we e exclude all these uh, the, the little uh, timeouts that we saw, which was only about 6%, we thought that th we had found something. The reality is, you know, 90-something percent of these transactions are not uh, uh, with errors. So how do we optimize these? This is really the bulk of what everybody's doing. So we could do cool things like saying, for this set of data, 20%, in this example, it's just 2,000 transactions. It could be 100,000, 200,000. Big data lets you do that. I could say, overall, this one piece of code, method uh, C, is the reason for this. So that would suggest to me that if I fix method C or I make it twice as fast, all of these will benefit from that one little change. And if I don't trust myself, I can look at the individuals and say, is there a consistency? Do all the little dots follow that same pattern? So if they do, it tells me that on a shoestring budget of developers, if I focus my attention on that, I'm going to have massive improvements. Again, just like in the customer in the beginning, 53 milliseconds gave 2,000 hours. But if I look at the data a different way, if I take that approach of why is the slowest thing slow, which is what my customer did before I got involved, which is what a lot of people do, either because of habit or their tools don't allow anything else, you'll see that all these really gnarly slow ones, they don't have a pattern as to why they're slow, right? Overall, there's a lot of different reasons. So what would be the one thing you would fix? And if you look at the individual transactions, seven different transactions, seven different reasons, there isn't something consistent that you can target. And the reason for something like this, and again, big data reveals this, that lack of consistency, is because of something called a performance phantom. This is a talk I gave at, at Web Summit in Dublin, the sister conference for this. Uh, the little short link is at the bottom if you want to watch the video for that. But the idea is that your code runs in an ecosystem. It runs in a JVM that has resources it needs, like Heap. That is a process that runs on an operating system that it's dependent on. It needs CPU and memory and disk I.O. for that to work. And these different apps could be split across different operating systems. 
and you think they're separate, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're VMs that share a common hypervisor in a, in a cloud environment or a virtualized environment. So it means they're all connected. It means that one can affect the other. And these environmental dependencies can actually make your code look slow when it's not. So in this example of a phantom, and the video gives a few more, I have a JVM, an application. This could be .NET or Node or any other technology that you want to use. So I've got, just for consistency's sake, I've got five different types of code. The ones at the top, A, they're very, very, very fast little methods. The ones at the bottom, E, they're much slower. But they're doing the same thing over and over. All else being equal, they shouldn't change their behavior. And the little green line at the bottom is saying whether or not this virtual machine is cleaning up garbage. And if you're not a developer, it just means that when I'm cleaning up the mess of memory, I have to pause all the code that was running until I'm complete. So what happens here is that all of these methods get extended by the same amount of time from an absolute perspective. But relatively speaking, method A, who is our fastest, our best piece of code, relatively speaking, looks the worst. It's 11 times slower. So you could very easily panic and say, what is up with method A? Let's get the developers to optimize this. And A, there's nothing to optimize because it's already fast. B, it's not slow because of the code. It's slow because of the environment. And just to show that this example could happen also in a virtualized environment, if we looked at this from if the virtual machine is stealing cycles because of overcommitment, you can get the same behavior. So what is the importance of this is that what looked like a root cause is actually a symptom, and these other environmental dependencies are the root cause. And again, the big data is going to show that. When the pie chart says everybody's slow because of one thing, that's your problem. That's code you need to fix. When the problem moves around, that inconsistency is indicative of something like this that's causing the issue. So again, the right approaches with the right telemetry is going to let you see that. Big data is going to let you analyze everything holistically and simply say, Maybe I'll be lazy. I'm not going to take the clever approaches that John had to identify the web service timeouts or the database timeouts. I'm just going to hit it with a sledgehammer. For all of my code, all my transactions, hundreds of thousands a day, what's the one thing I could fix that makes everything faster? And that's it. One little improvement is going to, is going to yield massive improvements for you. So what would you focus on first, right? I hope as a result of this, you're going to not try to do the why is the slowest thing slow analysis. You know, you might improve 3% of your transactions. Not a big deal. You could also get misled by these wonderful timeouts that we saw that are big deals. But again, they're only about 6%. But if you focus on the masses, you focus on everything that all of your users are, are doing, and, and, and employ fixes to uh, improve them overall, you're going to have the most positive impact to your business. And once you've done that, go back and fix the other things. So in summary, think holistically. Think of the broad environment that your world lives in. And if you get the right telemetry from the right places, either through tools that you've purchased or by putting it into your app in the beginning, and you ask the right questions of that data, you're going to be able to narrow down the scope of the issues. And if you don't get led astray by the flaw of averages and believing that everything's OK when it isn't, if you can remove the noise, right? How do you find the needle in the haystack? You remove the haystack. And that's what big data lets you do. Say, get rid of the noise. What's left? And that is going to let you find the things that matter, and most importantly, fix the things that matter without wasting a lot of time. So for those of you who have developer groups of two or three people, this is going to let you optimize their time and make the biggest improvement to your, uh, to your business. So thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.